dwarves of Elabor. We have come to reclaim our homeland. I offer you my help. How do we know he won't betray us? We don't. So I have to say, I sent out a couple of tweets to uh, my followers to see what they would like me to ask you. And I had an abundance of replies from something called Armitage Army. Okay. Now I have a question. How fitting is it that you are playing the king and leader of this group of somewhat of an army in the film, and yet in real life you have quite an army of a following as well? Yeah, we're sort of missing something, aren't we? I think I think we could have probably dressed up some of those uh, followers as dwarves and really gone to battle in the Battle of the Five Armies. Um, uh, they've been around for a while, so um, they're incredibly supportive of, of my work, and I often go and do a bit of research uh, online because they can be so informative about the characters that I'm playing. I don't have to go to a library, I just go to the Armitage Army. When did you first become aware of this army that you're the leader of? <laughs> um, it's, I don't know, it's, so, it's slowly formed over the, over the past 10 years, but mm -hmm. um, I don't know too much about it other than when you <laughs> say that to me. I have a question. You did an interview. You said you'd like to see there be a Thorin cocktail. What is in your ideal Thorin cocktail? Um, I don't know at the moment. I think it's <laughs> I think it's quite a short drink. Okay, it's a uh, short one. It's a short maybe drink. Maybe a shot. <laughs> it's it's maybe a shot. It's quite it's quite heady, and intoxicating. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. and it bites you on the back of the throat. And you like to get your whole army drunk with it. <laughs> yeah, all of them. <laughs> I have the only right. You said, I read an interview, you said that when you were younger, you were a no, you were a beanpole with a nose that you hadn't grown into. Yeah. So what happened? Um, I guess I grew into it. You grew into the bigger. nose. <laughs> yeah. I'm still a bit of a beanpole though. Well, what was it like for you to join a film like this? When did you get, find out you were going to be doing it? Um, I found out la um, October 2010 or 11, I think. Okay. Um, yeah, it, it was a real surprise that I was being asked to come and read for a role of a dwarf. Um, <laughs> I've spent most of my life not being cast because I'm too tall. How tall are you? Six foot two and a half. Six foot two and a half, okay. Um, so I, I really didn't think it was going to go anywhere. Um, but then, of course, Pete does his magic, and I thought, well, he's going to you know, do some digital, digital trickery, so mm -hmm. just focus on the character. And it was a character that I really enjoyed re reading the book as a child. So. We took it from there. I mean, how surreal is it to be playing a character that you read as a child yourself in the whole series? You know, it, it's it it feels like it's been in my mind and in my imagination for a long time. It's mm -hmm. and it's not been germinating. It's just that I haven't looked at it too in too much detail. So it felt very familiar to me. The the, the whole of Middle Earth and, and going to this character. It was as if it had been sitting there waiting in my mind. What is it like when you finally see the dragon, you finally see what it looks like when you're not just you in the green screens? I mean, I can't imagine acting across a, a screen for most of a movie. It was the biggest thrill, actually, of this yeah. of this week, because we've only just seen it. So um, I spent all of my shoot days imagining a dragon, and mm -hmm. it's beyond my imagination. So I'm really excited for the fans to see it, too. Wow.